This is one of those hunts where we did everything we thought right, but everything worked against us. We went in and set up and thought we were doing good. We turned on the call and all the cows in the next pasture came up to the fence and lined that fence like Indians around a wagon train. They were just staring us down. Mike saw the cow way back behind the cows and he came up but couldn't get through the cows so he went and circled around and actually almost got downwind from us when he came around that pine tree. Woo! What the? What happened, you hear me? Huh? What happened? I bet I hit the fence. He came on in, ran up, and stopped right in front of us, but we couldn't shoot for the cows lying against the fence. The coyote spooked for some reason and ran back down by the pine tree, and he stopped. Jeremy threw his gun up. We should have had him dead to right. But the best that we can figure is that Jeremy hit the fence. Needless to say, we didn't get the coyote. It just goes to prove that circumstances can work against you in a hunt like this. All these places for him to come from. And he had to come from right there. I wish you saw him because huh? I, I couldn't do nothing. I was wanting her to see him. I know it. I guarantee you I hit that grass on that fence. I wouldn't be surprised. You know what caused that, don't you? What's that? Them cows. He had to come around them cows, see, to get through. Well, I thought something was out there because that Yeah, that cow white cow, that white cow kept looking that way. But he couldn't get through to over here. He went around the cows. And I couldn't see him. And that's what he did. Right the yep. Uh, just the way it goes. You can't set up right every time. Well, the cows weren't here when we started. Hmm? The cows were in a different spot when we started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened. He had to go around them cows to get around them to get out here. And when he did that, that put him too close to them. What you just seen with Bill happens with every hunter. Whether you're shooting a large shotgun, three and a half inch magnum, or a large bore rifle at your game, recoil is felt in the shoulder and in the neck. You may not feel it that day because of the adrenaline, but the next morning you're going to feel it. And then when you go to retrieve that game and you're dragging that deer or that hog out of the woods and there's that tension in that low back, pain is going to result and I can help you with that. Come see me, Dr. Stolba at Stolba Chiropractic Center, Wake Village, Texas. See the big dead tree? To the left is the dead tree. Keep coming. Going to the right. Mm -hmm. He's right, see? To the right, coming down the creek. Okay guys, everybody's gonna think I would have been shooting that coyote. But what you don't realize is that we had the camera zoomed all the way in and that coyote was actually about 400 yards. Looks like he was right in front of us and we ought to be shooting. We filmed him for a long ways off and he finally worked his way in. When we shot him, he was actually about 200 yards. So the reason we didn't shoot is because he was just too far away. Yeah, you 
got him. He got hit him back. He hit him far back. Got him that time. He's still back. I'm not sad at him for that either. <laughs> you got him. He said he's like, he's dead. Hey, I can't tell he's stuck around me. He's dead. Good shot. Good shot. All the deer is going to come and investigate. Me and Wade came out this morning. It kind of stormed last night. And the sun came out bright this morning. On the way in, we saw a coyote sitting on the side of the road. He was just sitting sunny. We came in here on this place, and uh, the wind's blowing straight to our back the way we're sitting here. It can be blowing just to the left of where Wade's walking there. And uh, we set up, and the coyote, first time I saw him, well, the first thing we saw was a bunch of deer spooked from down there in that corner right down there. And uh, we kept watching down there, and the deer kept looking over their shoulders like they saw something. About that time, we saw the coyote. And uh, he kind of, he, 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 he saw everything and he heard everything, but he wasn't sure. He was going to try to get downwind of us. And that's a little bit of a far shot what Wade took, but uh, we didn't have much choice. We were doing a, a jackrabbit distress, and we switched over to a uh, pup distress, and that got his attention pretty good. But he still, he, he didn't act like he was going to come in, so we went ahead and took him out there, and Wade's going out there to get him right now. We kind of went through a dry spell there. We were had calling them in. They were coming in from behind us and stuff like that. And, uh, we uh, we kind of caught back up this morning. We needed this hunt, and uh, it has been a sure enough fine hunt this morning. This cow coyote, he kind of acted like uh, maybe he had been hunted before, and we have uh, we've had a couple on this same place right here that we've let get away but uh he didn't get away from us this morning we outfoxed him this morning so and we got another dead greasy greasy sucker coyote this morning ha <laughs> this is mac and we've been on the prowl that is a big old coyote right there look at the head on that sucker it is a cover not a case also, like Brian was saying, it's one-piece design, fits many different style guns. Uh, your, your bolt action, your automatics, muzzle loaders, single shot, you name it, it fits most guns. I'm Mac with Hunting and Hunters TV Show. I've been buying my trucks from Michael Coleman at Coleman Motors in New Boston, Texas for the last 10 years. If you want a truck, go there and get one. Michael Coleman is there every day. He takes care of business. We're here at Rose Garden Eatery. Tommy and Gene want to welcome you here, and so do I, because this is one of the best places in the South I've found to eat. It's great for the family, and you have a lot of fun, and the food is fabulous. 20 minutes south of Texarkana, right here on Highway 59. <laughs> he was looking at me. <laughs> oh.
All right, Corley, what happened? <laughs> Jeremy missed. Jeremy missed. I missed. Well, we set up here. I'm always going to get them running. <laughs> we set up here and everything was going pretty good. Coyote came in from over there. Sun's behind us over here to my left. Coyote come in, kind of stayed below the hill there. Jeremy couldn't get on his shooting sticks because the coyote was looking at him and he missed him. So, coyote won, us none. We're going to go somewhere else and see if we can do this again. Uh, you're out of jail. Get him, Corner. Oh, you got close. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I know moving cars. It must have been further than we thought it was. <laughs> I put it on top of it and it was I mean, it was really easy. Sorry, I couldn't get the remote. <laughs> oh, boy. How close was that? I can't even open it. It's a little late now. <laughs> You never know. Actually, that one the other day did circle and let me shoot at him again. <laughs> well, he was on the verge of being too far for the shotgun. And that's all we had available at the time. <laughs> he wasn't going to probably come in no closer. Oh, well. 68 yards, I guess that's too far for a shotgun. <laughs> anyway, we had a good setup here. We rabbit called and we howled. I mean, we uh, distressed, pup distressed. Didn't do no good, but we turned on a howl. We hadn't done no good with a howl in a while, but we turned on a howl and this sucker come in behind us again uh, to the howl. But we didn't get him. <laughs> Coyotes are two this morning and we're zero. Corley, you know how close you came to hit that son of a gun? I don't know if you realize it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that first shot you took, you were almost hit him. Yeah, it made him it, was, it made it him it right made him it his, made him jump. It went right behind his butt and dirt flew up. You can <laughs> see it on the video, I guarantee you. Oh yeah. Max custom predator calls. Each call is a unique work of art that will call in predators. Max calls are made from deer antler, rifle brass, grapevine, and exotic woods, and is the real call of the wild. I'm Max. And I'm Prowler. And we have found a new call come out on the market. Been out about a couple of years now. Yeah. It's called the Game Tracks. And it's got uh, 17 industry first. Industry first. But now, I'm so dumb till I don't know what some of them are. But anyway, uh, they're there if you want to research that out. But what I do know about the call is it works. What I do know about it is it works because. And, and I think this is why the sound quality is so much better than the competition and what we have used in the past. A lot better. We have called in some uh, coyotes from as far away as half a mile. Oh, at, at that least. We, I mean, we saw him come in from that far away. At least that far. Uh, he, uh, he, he came in to it. Uh, I was a little concerned when we first got it that, that the sound wasn't loud enough because of what I'd been used to, but it didn't take me long to figure out that it didn't have to be that loud. Right. 
uh, the loudness was more for me than it was for the animals. than it was for the coyote. This thing's waterproof. Yeah. The old call, I've seen the time when it just sprinkled rain and we'd gather everything up and take off to the house because we couldn't, couldn't we use couldn't, it. You couldn't use it. I mean, if you sat out there in the rain, you were going to run a $500, $600 call. Yeah. And so, but this in here, if it goes raining on you, don't worry about it. When you get to the house, wipe it off. Future products you will see on Hunting the Hunter. Primo's double bull blind, Primo's trigger stick, Primo's truth camera, Primo's hunting lights, Primo's XP scent control, Primo's hunting bags, sucker. I call that little sucker in. That makes four bobcats that I've killed out of this deer stand this year. There you go again. I'm just trying to tell everybody if you'll take your call with you, you'll call in lots of stuff that you wouldn't normally see while you're deer hunting. And I know some people may think, well, it'll scare off my deer. But I'm going to show you something right now. There's deer right after I shot. They're still standing there and they've paid zero attention to what's going on. So get out there and let's kill some bobcats and coyotes. This is Mac and I've been on the prowl. So I kept calling him a little while and uh, here he come in and he come up in this thicket. He's not but about, uh, I don't know, 30. 30 yards from my stand. He was in this thicket peeping out, trying to see what it was that he was hearing. Let me see if I can get him out of here. I heard a shot earlier, and uh, this is my son. I've come over here to pick him up, and he did the same thing that I've done this evening. He called in a bobcat and shot it out of his deer stand, and then saw lots of deer, and he got a big cat. Okay, there he is. It's getting dark on me real, real fast here. But as you can see by that rifle laying beside him, that is a pretty good sized cat also. M2D camo is a new camouflage pattern that mimics field grass. It grows in almost every terrain. The coloration and pattern imitates natural brush and grass which makes it a great camo for ground level hunting. Designed for maximum concealment, M2D camo actually changes color in different terrain, whether you're in a spruce forest or in a field. It really adapts to different surroundings and adapts to different lights. M2D camo is made to deceive. For more information, go to m2dcamo.com. Some of the features that come on the Olympic Arms Ultramag AR is it's got a extended bolt release. Makes it a whole lot easier if you got a scope on there to get a hold of your bolt to put one in. It comes with a mag pull, adjustable stock, has a kick pad on it. It's also, this is an Ultramag AR and it's totally redesigned to accept your short magnum cartridges. This is a uh, 25 WSSM. It's got a uh, ballistic silver tip on it. 
and that makes that a little bit longer than a standard cartridge. Well, what they've done, they've designed the clip well to accept that type of uh, cartridge without having to reseat your bullets and make them uh, in there deeper. They've also, they put uh, the Picatinny rail up here. You've got a clean handguard, so you're not having to uh, handle this and hold on to your Picatinny rail like a lot of guns. They got this where this is real smooth, gun points super well. They've also put a stainless steel fluted barrel made by Olympic Arms. That's something else about these guns. They are 100% made in the USA by Olympic Arms. Their website is oleyarms.com. What people don't realize about a coyote is his sight and his hearing and his smell is better than any dog that you'll ever run across. And a dog has a pretty, pretty good sense of all three. But a coyote's got them topped. Uh, they can hear better than a dog. They can smell better than a dog. So anything you do to give you an advantage on that, you you got to do it. You have got to have that advantage. Another thing we use, and it depends on, it depends on where we hunt and how far away we think coyote might come as to whether we use binoculars. Uh, sometimes we use them, sometimes we don't. Uh, if we're hunting in a real tight area, we probably won't care binoculars, but if we're hunting on big open fields, we care binoculars. And like I said, we've got, we've got all different bland, brands and flavors, uh, different powers. Uh, there's no set rule. That I go back to what I say about, you know, everybody's got to use what they got. You don't have to go out and buy any of this stuff. Just because it looks like this, if you've got shooting sticks, use them. I mean, it don't have to be a certain kind. Uh, same way with guns. Whatever gun you got, that's what we want you to use. I mean, it's great if you can go out and buy some kind of special varmint gun, but you don't have to do that to go coyote hunting. Most people's got all this stuff that they use in deer hunting. Uh, they use it in turkey hunting. You know, coyote hunting is so much like turkey hunting until it's just, it's unreal. The only difference is, you can't hear a coyote coming in to you where you can hear a turkey and you can say, well, he's out there or he's over here. On a coyote, it's all by sight. You've got to pick him out before he picks you out. Video Gear Shop, located at 1205 East 36th Street in Texarkana. We sell everything from video surveillance to hunting cameras to projectors and big screens to watch the big game in a big way. Video Gear Shop can equip schools, businesses, and homes with sound systems and video equipment for classrooms, conference rooms, and even the man cave. We even sell Mac extended warranties for your binoculars, your big screen, or even your barbecue grill. Video Gear Shop, from novice to professional, supplying all your video and photography needs. Call us toll free 866 212 4327 or check us out on Facebook or at videogearshop.com. Here's another good show brought to you by Olympic Arms, Mac and Prowler, Hunting the Hunters. It's very seldom you get to see that many coyotes in this part of the country. And it's very, very seldom you get to film them that much and interact with them that much before you, they either leave or you shoot them or whatever. Because most of the time they come in, you're in so close to them. 
you don't have the opportunity to film them like they did on this particular hunt. One of the things that we like to do is film in daylight. That, that makes it even harder. You throw a camera into the mix, that makes it even harder. And it's like Will Primo said, this ain't Hollywood, baby. This is the real thing. This is what you see. And we want to take the opportunity to thank you. We would like for you to visit our website. Right down here on the bottom, macandprowler.com. We have a lot of exciting stuff on there. We got t-shirts and we got videos that you can order and things like that. But more importantly, I want you to go to our Facebook. On our Facebook page, you can stay up with what we're doing right now. This particular time of the year, we're doing a lot of bow fishing. And we're going to air some of that on there too. So, right here, KTSS out of Hope. Saturdays, 3.30 p.m. Sundays, 10.30 p.m. Tuesdays, 9.30 p.m. Right here, KTSS Hope, Arkansas. You guys, come see us again. We'll be right here next week. Hunting the Hunters has been brought to you by Olympic Arms, meeting the demands of the 21st century. M2D Camo, Gun Huggy. Dr. Stolba, Chiropractic. Coleman Motors, Game Tracks, EW Calls, and High Score Sleds. Also brought to you by Wildlife Energy Drink, Bill's Custom Turkey Calls, Jim Yunt Success Dynamics, Video Gear Shop, Richardson Hill Funeral Home, Rocky Hills Cabin, Trophy Hunter Products, Kansas Creek Game Birds, Video Perfection Photography, and Mac and Prowler hunting the hunter's call, the true call of the wild. And God, country, and gun.